Well, your students, welcome back for another week of lessons. Um, I'm coming at you actually on the Friday of last week uh, to bring you next week's lessons. And again, we're going to just continue to work on some of the things that we've been talking about in these lessons. Uh, again, a lot about support, a lot about keeping our bodies involved in our music making. Okay. A lot of getting the physical part of singing down so that you really feel the power from your own body to help you generate the sound to the best of your ability. Okay. So as we're working through that, we're going to be thinking about those things. We're again, always thinking about, about the tall, relaxed jaw, the cheek muscles that aren't smiling, that are allowing this to be loose. And again, keeping our head from moving up and down, allowing it to be in neutral position and spinning the sound out this direction. Okay. So let's just start again, similarly to how we did before, with just kind of a simple warm up, just a little, um, we're just gonna go. With a neon as you're doing it, I just want you to gently, with the back of your hands, just kind of gently massage, sort of an almost a circular motion right on your cheeks. Ready, and. Next warm up that I want to do is going to involve a little more of our body with it. So, again, I'm going to have you stand. I'm going to have you place your hands by pressing in to your midsection a little bit. I realize I've got more area to press in than many of you, but even if you're very, very, very slight, find a way to push in because no matter how slight you are, you still have a diaphragm muscle that needs to be engaged. Now, this one we're going to do a Sort of on a bounce, you're gonna go, yeah. So it's the first two are gonna bounce, yeah. Then the last one's gonna be smooth using that same air, yeah. And you should be able to feel that pulsation here, yeah. So it should feel like it's bouncing back and forth. Yeah, and then steady pressure. Ah. So on that last one, I don't know if you can see it when I go this way. Let me see which hand is better. This one probably. Move this out of the way here. Right here. Um, maybe there, if I make a fist, if I go. Yeah. Ah. You should feel steady pressure outward on the... Yeah. So again, when you're doing it with just your thumbs pointed inward, let's try it. Ready? And. Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy to do this. This is a challenging exercise to do, but I want to make sure you can feel it going. Yeah. Should feel like it. Pulsates, pulsates, then pushes out. Yeah. This is a very, very entry level um, uh, technique, which is referred to as coloratura. That's what we're working on today. Here, let's try here. And yeah. Yeah. 
That's high. That's high for me. I know that's high for you. Some of you have probably switched to head voice before that. That's okay. It's harder to do this in head voice. You still can. Just takes more air. Okay. Head voice is going to take more air. Now, one thing I want to talk to you about regarding head voice is many of us have this misconception that head voice is our weaker voice. And right now it is. That's because of this support. But that doesn't mean that it's a worse voice. To be honest, your head voice in every case, and I'm speaking primarily to the sopranos and altos, um, it's different when you talk falsetto versus head voice. Head voice is acceptable to use, falsetto is not really when it comes to outside a choir. In choir, falsetto is fine, but outside a choir, falsetto is considered the false voice. It's not used very often. So we want to talk more about head voice. This is talking sopranos and altos. I know that when you sing for fun, you're primarily singing in your chest voice because we get more feedback from the way we sound in our chest voice. The problem is, as we've mentioned before with the location of our ears and our mouth and all these things that make us not hear ourselves naturally, um, the version of us that we hear really doing a great job in our chest voice to the people listening to us in the real world is flat, okay? Chest voice is always flat until you learn support. Once you know how to support it, then you can get it in tune. That's why the industry standard, most common uh, alteration or effect that's added in uh, when, when, when they consider auto-tuning in the performance music industry is helping pitches be higher. Okay, so when you listen to that person singing, even if you hear them in concert, all that stuff's funneled through a machine. And so because it's funneled through a machine, you're hearing a part that's just pushed up just a little tiny bit because most people that are singing um, um, popular music for a living aren't trained singers. They're people that had uh, a, a lot of talent for singing and haven't turned that talent into skill through study uh, because they're singing. And that's fine. The industry helps them out. But I want you to be as competent of singers as possible. And the first step towards that competency is hearing what you really sound like and getting this support figured out so that you can make an authentic sound that sounds the way you believe it sounds to the people listening to you. But it starts with this support, okay? So um, that yeah is a way to kind of engage that diaphragm muscle to make it work for you, okay? Because you should be able to feel this muscle moving out when you engage sound. That's the main thing we want to have happen is that that moves out. And you can, you can use consonants. You can use anytime your lips can go together, your teeth can go together, your, 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 your tongue can close off in your mouth. That creates compression, which can help simulate this thing. Let's do I love to sing, and we're going to use the little E sound at the beginning of an L. I love to sing. On the first one, it's not really necessary because the pitch isn't high enough to force us to really have to do much with it. But as it gets higher, that's going to be more and more important. So you're going to use that little close, and you should feel it here. I love to sing right when you go you should feel this part of your body engage i love to sing so ready and i love to sing i love to sing i love to sing
Now, the other thing that's interesting about using that consonant, the vowel portion of the consonant itself, the little oh, oh, the little oh sound that you have, which lets air out, that can help confirm for you whether or not the pitch is going to happen. So when I get up to high A flat, which is high for me, if I can sustain that on that, I know that the sound's going to come out. For example, I love to sing. It, it's a way to kind of confirm for myself that that note is there. And if the note's there, when I when I do that or when I do a lip buzz, right? Then that note's there when I'm singing if my technique is accurate. So again, this comes back to that same thing we're doing. We're coming back to the lip buzzing about how if you can reach the stratosphere, right, we're singing pitches which are way above the staff um, with those lip buzzes, those are notes you can hit with your mouth open on an ah vowel too. You just have to get the technique behind you so that you can support that sound up there because the support is, is the part that's missing, okay? Just a second. Something down here on the floor. Not exactly sure what this is. Um, almost, I think it's a ping pong ball that's been uh, colored like an Easter egg. Not sure. Not sure what the significance of that is. Um, you know what though, it does remind me of something. Um, in college, I was, I was at, um, I was over at, um, at, 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 a, at, a, at a friend's house, um, it was sort of like a, 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 at that time I was singing in the bass section. This was sort of like a, a bass, a bass party, a party for the for the members of our section. We used to do that uh, regularly, just as a way to kind of build some camaraderie. And uh, one of the guys there, um, what was his name? We called him Diamond Dave. Dave Dave Myers. Dave Myers was his name, and. Um, you know, um, I'm going to I'm going to try to get back to the lesson. This story could go on and on forever. So uh, the important thing to remember is that uh, his name. Uh, the important thing to remember is, is that we call him Diamond Dave. So uh, let's let's get back to the lesson. All right. Um, let's do just some more. Uh, let's do the lip buzzing. start if you have trouble making that lip buzz last the whole time that's because of the ear so what i want you to do is try to take in a low breath let it expand on here now you can probably see it's hard for me to see on this little tiny part of my screen but you can probably see about where the bottom of this staff is is aligned with about the sort of topish edge of my shoulders and when i breathe they're barely going to move Right at the end, they go up just a tiny bit. Many of us, when we breathe, it goes like this. And the challenge is you restrict everything. That's a version of breathing that tightens everything in when we breathe. We want the opposite. We want everything to expand out. That's how you would fill it, right? If you've ever, if you've ever had a beach ball that you've tried to blow up with air, hopefully you've used an air compressor, but let's say you didn't. And you bought it brand new, so it came folded up in that little sort of like looks like a pie wedge almost because it's rounded on one side and then it's kind of uh, a 90 degree angle maybe in the corner. And as you open that up and you find the valve, if you start blowing into that when it's still folded up, it's still restricted, it's really hard to fill it full of air. So what you usually have to do is open it up all the way. Sometimes you have to even almost pull on it like it's a, like it's a, a bag for chips or something to get it to get it separated from itself so they'll allow the air to flow in. Same thing happens in our body. If we take in a breath that just goes like this, it makes everything go in instead of everything going out. We don't want everything to go this way for the for that singing. That's This is not a good position to put me in to sing. I would not do a good job. What I want to do to sing, I want to feel grounded to the ground. Right now my legs are more than shoulder width apart, and I'm pretty broad-shouldered to begin with. 
So I breathe. Now I'm full of air, but I still feel confident to make a sound. And my body looks totally different from the perspective of you right now being the audience. So if I do both versions, I'll do the bad version first. My legs are maybe, maybe shoulder width apart right now. Do I look ready to sing to you? Yeah, that's option A. Let me reset. Here's option B. Which one do I look more ready to go? Hopefully this one, because as it's demonstrated, I can speak <laughs> to you from this position, which I can't do when I do the other one. So be mindful of what's happening here as you're doing these lip buzzes. Ready, and. sure how many of you made it with us to the very end. If you did, you would have made it to F above high C. And again, almost all the music we're going to do in clarinet, now, acapella choir, they do extend up into this high range. Actually, they're, um, the Betelehemu has a, has a B flat in it. But uh, most of our music uh, 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 in uh, nitrate choir, concert choir, and even most of the music in in, um, in the other choirs stops at G or F. Never usually getting up so high. Now keep in mind that this, as a high note in our choir music, is lower than our starting note was. <laughs> For that last exercise. And that's another thing that happens a lot in singing. Our mind decides that because it's the highest note, it's harder than if it's than if it's um the lowest note of the same phrase. So if we started and we sing, we tried to sing that note right there is the same note as if we did. It feels higher. Feels higher when it's the last note of the phrase than if it's the first note of the same, and it's the same pitch. So just another thing to keep in mind. Um, let's see. I'd like to do one more. I'm trying to check the time. We're getting close to the end here, but um, let's just try to sing one that goes the other direction. See if we can't reset our larynx and. Try to make this as legato as we can, as much air consistently flowing. So again, these are the consonants and the letters and the vowel changes and the pitch changes are just checkpoints along this journey that your air is taking that never stops. So we're gonna sing.
faces, and Altos Among Us will keep going. something today that's valuable that you can use uh, moving forward. I want to thank you for tuning in and um, I will see you in school next week and obviously for our lessons next time. Take care.